We're cooking with some beautiful mushrooms this week. If you are new and you love home cooking, we would love for you to subscribe to our channel and let's get in the kitchen and cook. We recently purchased some beautiful lion's mane and pink oyster mushrooms from a local restaurant here in the Vegas area. These mushrooms are not only delicious, but they actually have great health benefits, such as um, it's good for the heart, uh, for your immune system, for brain function, from cognitive improvement, all sorts of things. If you have access to mushrooms such as these, we highly, highly suggest that you get some and just treat yourself every once in a while and get those benefits in your body. Now these mushrooms are not cheap, so we try to space it out and spread it out into as many meals as possible. First up, let's prep the pink oyster mushrooms. Now there's this really tough bit at the bottom of the mushroom that I like to cut off. It's kind of chewy once you cook it. It's not really tasty. You kind of want these little petal bits, which are really nice and super duper tender. This is the little bit that I cut off and I'm gonna save that for a stock later on. I figured we may as well use everything and try not to waste anything. And as far as the rest now, there's a little white spot here that I also cut off on the very end. And then I'm just gonna chop strips of the mushrooms for a dish. We're actually gonna make some greens with this and the mushrooms create a sort of meaty texture to the dish and also add some lovely umami flavor. We often like to treat mushrooms as the meat to any dish because it does really give us that texture. So just use mushrooms like the meat of any dish that you're making. So here I've chopped up all of the oyster mushrooms and I'm going to just put it into a pot with some onions. You can see how lovely and big these petals are at the restaurant that we get it from. They do like a, it's sort of like a fast food burger and you know, like mushroom tender joint. If you're in the Vegas area, definitely hit up Chaga Root. This is where we got it from. They have the best burgers, mushroom burgers, um, mushroom tenders. They are so delicious. It's one of our favorite places ever. In a separate pan, we are going to be sauteing up some mushrooms and onions with some salt for a pasta dish. We have also boiled up some cauliflower and broccoli ready for the pasta sauce. Here in my original pot, I have all of the mushrooms with some onions, which I'm going to saute it up with grapeseed oil. This is gonna be our base for the greens. We wanna give the mushrooms a beautiful char, and I've also seasoned it with some ancho chili and smoked paprika here, and just some all-purpose seasoning and some salt, and we're going to saute this just to get it going. Now the broccoli and the cauliflower are ready. They are nice and boiled. I'm going to just boil up some pasta. This is some really cool shaped pasta that I have discovered. We love experimenting with all these different pastas. This is called trattoli, I believe. Another one of our favorites is cavatappi. Oh, that texture of the pasta is so good. We are going back to making the greens. So I have here just chopped up some Swiss chard and some collard greens. We like to mix it up with the greens just because it just adds some variety to the greens. Already our pot of broccoli and cauliflower for our pasta sauce is ready. We got rid of most of the water. We just kept a little bit of water just to blend up our sauce with and we added some salt, onion powder, and we're going to add a little bit of uh, almond butter. We usually use cashews, but we don't have any more cashews. We just use some almond butter for some creaminess and then some nutritional yeast for some cheesy flavor. I love almond butter. It's one of my favorite snacks. Currently, I eat it by the spoonful, or if you add some chocolate chips in there as well, it tastes delicious. I realized I also had some parsley, so I just chopped up some roots, uh, the very barky end bits, and we are gonna blend that into the sauce as well. You're going to taste and season the sauce as you go. Oops, it looks like I got a little bit of a spill. Mercy is helping me. And we are going to just pour that sauce straight into the pasta. You wanna make sure that you have plenty of sauce just because we don't want a dry pasta. We love making this pasta dish because it is filled with vegetables and it's just blended up into a sauce. It is so, so easy and so good. Here we are mixing in the 
mushrooms that we sauteed earlier and we also added some peas to the dish. We're going to just mix it up and serve it up for lunch. I forgot to mention I did drizzle some olive oil into this and you can top this with some fresh cracked pepper, some more nutritional yeast. Um, it is a great way to get some B vitamins in through the nutritional yeast and it really is delicious. The kids gobble this up. If you have any younger kids that may not like vegetables or are just kind of picky eaters, we suggest making something like this because you can just blend up a bunch of vegetables in the pasta sauce. And then just serve it up on some pasta. You can see Isaiah is coming for his second bowl because it was just that good. Remember the mushroom little buttons? Well, we are going to put in all of our mushroom scraps in here with uh, some onions. We're gonna saute it a little bit just to get that flavor developed and then add some water. Add your seasonings, we're going to cover it and boil it along with the greens that we have here, which looks lovely. And then boil it until the end of the night. And once it's ready for dinner, this is what it looks like. A beautiful mushroom stock and here are the lovely greens for dinner. Alrighty, up next we have some lion's mane. Let's cook this up. We have a few ways that we're going to use this. First, we are going to season up some mushroom nodules, whatever you call, a little piece of this mushroom. <laughs> we're going to add some grapeseed oil in a bowl and some seasonings. I have our all-purpose seasoning as well as some uh, ancho and smoked paprika just to give it a little bit of a smoky flavor. We are going to make sure that all sides are seasoned well and well coated in that grapeseed oil. We're going to fry this on a pan. I just used my hands here, rolling it into the seasoning. This is what it looks like. And we're going to put this on a very hot pan, our cast iron skillet, just like this with some a little bit of grapeseed oil on the pan just to make sure it's not sticking. And we're going to weigh it down. I don't have like a press or anything, so I used what I had. Um, it got a little hot, so I put a bowl with my mittens. We flipped it halfway and look at the char on each piece of mushroom. Hoo wee! So we are going to do it one more time on this side. And it, we only did this for like about a minute or so. And mm, mm, mm. look at this delicious mushroom. And oh, we are so excited about these mushrooms. They taste so, so good. Once they're done, we are going to just put them on a plate and let them cool a little bit. And then we can shred this just like chicken. Honestly, it has the texture of chicken. It's like stringy like chicken, as you can see. Look at that. So cool, so delicious. Now the uncooked mushrooms are also gonna be just as easily shreddable as the cooked ones. Look at how it shreds. It actually reminds me a lot of crab meat. I've seen a lot of recipes on Pinterest and YouTube making lion's mane crab cakes, which one day I will definitely like to try. But you can see as a close up here, it is, it really resembles crab meat. And so I'm just going to shred this by hand as little as possible so we can spread it out throughout our meals. And we're just gonna make a couple of things with them. It actually looks like chicken in this bowl. <laughs> so in this pot, we are making a spaghetti sauce, very simple, mirepoix, onions, carrots, celery, and some of that mushrooms. We're gonna saute it down very quickly with some uh, salt. And then we're just going to add a can of tomato, crushed tomatoes, and a little bit of water. You can season this however you like to. We use, we love to use Italian seasonings and oregano, and maybe put a bay leaf if you are fancy and if you have. This red sauce is going to be so delicious. We are going to cover it and simmer it until it is done. Moving along, we're gonna make a sort of a pot thai dish. We are gonna do some rice noodles, so we have some vegetables. I am throwing in that shredded chicken, or rather, lion's mane mushrooms. I am using the biggest cast iron skillet that we have here, and we're just gonna saute this with a little bit of grapeseed oil and just simple, just some salt. You can add maybe some sesame oil in this too, but we're gonna actually use uh, some curry paste in this and you can literally use any vegetable you like. We have some cabbage going in right here and this sauce we've just made with some curry paste, some um, uh, organic soy sauce, some coconut aminos. You can use anything you want and honestly I would have loved some more curry paste in this to just 
bring some more curryness, curry flavor in here. As far as the rice noodles goes, we just soaked the dry noodles until they are tender in warm water. And then we're just going to put it into the pan, add the sauce, and saute it until it is done. We don't like to overcook this, so make sure that you add just enough sauce and water until the rice noodles are tender. Sprinkle in a little bit of coriander or cilantro, some spring onions, and the shredded mushrooms that we just seared. And look at that meatiness. It looks like beef in this. We're going to serve up a bowl here for um, all of the kids and me for lunch today. And we love how this dish turned out. Wouldn't you love a bowl of this? Top it off with a wedge of lime just to give it a little bit of acidity. You can add some vinegar in here as well and some jalapenos. The kids loved it and everyone was happy. We wanted to also make another greens dish with the lion's mane just to see if there was a difference between uh, using the oyster mushrooms and the lion's mane. So I have here some onions and bell peppers sauteing. We're going to throw in some of that lion's mane shredded. And then of course the same thing, we're gonna chop up some greens. We have some um, collards and Swiss chard. I like to chop our Swiss chard and collards rather in small pieces because I don't want it to be like long strips of collards or like big pieces. Um, I find that this really absorbs the flavors that I use much better. So this is what I like to do. So into the pot it goes with some uh, smoked paprika and ancho for some extra smokiness, some onion powder, all-purpose seasoning. We're going to saute this until all the flavors meld into the vegetables. We're gonna add a little bit of water and then cover it up to cook until it is done. And we usually like to cook this at least, I don't know, over like three, four hours, something like that. I'm just taking a quick bite of my food. As I was eating, I was boiling up some kava toppy. And once the pasta was done, I just tossed it with the delicious sauce. And here you go, another dish made with delicious lion's mane. We enjoyed this pasta in a cozy bedroom watching Meg 3. Alrighty, dinner is ready and this is gonna be the lion's mane greens. Um, Trey ate the whole bowl because it was that good. We had so much fun making food out of lion's mane this week. I hope you enjoyed spending time with us in the kitchen and we inspired you to eat your best, live your best and happy new year, happy 2024. Subscribe if you are new and we'll see you next year.